no churn, no allulose, no xanthan gum or alcohol. This three ingredient keto ice cream is so easy to make and I've got a trick to ensure that you get scoopable ice cream at home. Let's go. We're sticking as close to the traditional method of making an ice cream as possible, which is just cream and condensed milk, right? In doing my research, I wanted to use ingredients that everyone in the world can find. And that's when Gemma from Bigger Boulder Baking's recipe caught my eye. So we are converting her recipe as she does use sugar to keto and we wanna make it sugar free. She does have a gazillion ice cream recipes on her channel, so I do hope you pay her a visit the link will be in the description box. If you haven't made a keto ice cream before, the historic problem is that it does tend to freeze over into a block of ice. But we have all been missing a trick and if you follow my advice given in this recipe, it will be a thing of the past. Bye Felicia. First I will show you how to make the base of the ice cream and then we'll get into seven different flavors which is great options for you. I will have timestamps linked in the description box so you can jump to whichever recipe flavor you prefer. Also the nutritional information for the base of the ice cream recipe is listed in the description box as well as a list of ingredients with two sets of measurements. Let's go! Over a medium heat, add two and a half cups of heavy whipping cream to a deep pot, then two thirds cup of sweetener and three tablespoons of butter. You're going to let this simmer, stirring occasionally. You will see it come to a boil and this is why you need a deep pot so it doesn't spill over. Let this simmer for about half an hour, stirring occasionally, and the liquid will reduce, hence the term condensed. And the time will allow the sweetener to melt into the ingredients. You should now have a thick and creamy mixture. Turn off the heat and optionally you can add about a teaspoon of vanilla and give it a good mix to check that there are no lumps and it is completely smooth. Your condensed milk will need to cool down completely and I'm using a glass jar to store mine. Here I'm just showing you a trick if your condensed milk is still lumpy by simply straining it. Let it cool down to room temperature and then store it in the fridge and it'll keep for about two weeks. The basic ice cream recipe is just 400 ml of the keto condensed milk and two cups of heavy whipping cream. I'm using a stand mixer with the whisk attachment, but you can certainly use a hand mixer too. I just found this easier. Add two cups of heavy cream to the bowl and whisk until stiff peaks. Now this is the condensed milk. Mine turned out very thick because I cooked it for an hour, just testing out to see what happens. So this is how you can expect your condensed milk to be if you cook it for longer than half an hour. Whisk that together until soft peaks and as an extra I added a teaspoon of vanilla because I used a vanilla ice cream as the base for all the other flavors. Next we will add the mixture to a container that is freezer friendly. I first added mine to a piping bag and used this brownie pan for portion control as each casing is about one scoop of ice cream. You will notice that I'm not compressing the mixture at all, just trying to fill the spaces. So even if you're using a spoon, just lightly dollop it into the container. And if you don't eat any while doing this, you should get 12 scoops. And yes, I got 11. Because I'm using a baking pan, I covered it with saran or cling wrap. So do cover yours. And this step is only if you're preparing it in advance. At this point, I froze it because I wanted to test how long it takes to defrost to get to the scoopable ice cream phase. And the answer for me was half an hour. So if you are making this in advance, you would freeze it, of course, and then defrost it for half an hour on your bench top. So if you really want to freeze it, you would only need to freeze it for half an hour. And then if you've meal prepped it and it's in the freezer for a number of days, it would just need to defrost 
for half an hour as well. When I tested this recipe, it was 16 degrees Celsius outside or 61 degrees Fahrenheit. So you will need to gauge in your location because obviously it's gonna be hotter or colder. It will affect that half an hour gap. This is the ice cream straight out of the freezer and you will notice it is not a block of ice even with no defrost time. Now that we've made our vanilla ice cream, we have six other flavors to show you. The recipes for these flavors, I mean quantities, will only cover one to two scoops max because most of us are either doing keto alone or with ourselves and a partner. If you have a favorite flavor and you want to make the entire batch that flavor, say mint chocolate chip, you would need to multiply the mint chocolate chip ingredients accordingly. If you need help with this, Drop me a comment below and we can do the multiplication together. Fun times! To a bowl, add one tablespoon of sweetener of your choice, one tablespoon of sugar-free chocolate chips and two tablespoons of almond butter. And mix that together until it's fully combined and you can use it straight away or refrigerate until you're ready to use. I just added one teaspoon of the cookie dough to one scoop of ice cream and mixed it in well so that the ice cream takes on the cookie dough flavor with every bite. Then added little balls on top to intensify the flavor. For the peanut butter chocolate, add two tablespoons of organic peanut butter and two tablespoons of sugar-free chocolate chips to a bowl. And yes, I mixed in a tablespoon of the white just for variation. And here you will notice I didn't add any sweetener as it is down to taste. Once combined, it's ready to use or cover and refrigerate. And when I was ready, I added two teaspoons of the peanut butter chocolate mixture to one scoop of ice cream and combined that so the ice cream takes on the flavor. Then another two teaspoons to get more of the mixture in and finally one tablespoon of organic peanut butter to intensify the flavor and change the color of the ice cream. Little dollops of peanut butter chocolate mixture on top and you can create swirls if you like as well. First, we are going to make a strawberry puree for that ripple effect. Over a medium heat, add three strawberries to a pot and to that add one teaspoon of sweetener because strawberries can be quite sour. As it bubbles, stir and mash it up and if it's too thick, you can add about a teaspoon of water just to thin it out. This only takes five minutes to make and you want to let it cool down completely before use and even better refrigerate. When it is cooled, I added two teaspoons of the strawberry puree to one scoop of ice cream and this is a keto sugar-free cookie. I used half the mixture to make this giant cookie and if you want the recipe, the link is in the top right corner of your screen. I crushed some of the cookie into the ice cream to give us that classic shortcake taste and just mixed it all together. Added it to a serving bowl and added a little more puree and a mini cookie for some pizzazz. Over a medium heat, add a quarter cup of raspberries and one teaspoon of sweetener. As it bubbles, Stir and mash it up further and you can add a couple teaspoons of water to thin it out if it gets too thick. It's ready when the sweetener is melted and you have the consistency you're after, which is like a thin jam. Do let it cool completely before use. It would be even better to refrigerate it first. I then added two teaspoons of chopped pistachio nuts to one scoop of ice cream and mix that well. Then two teaspoons of the raspberry puree. Using a fork, I made swirls to create a ripple effect and finally a sprinkle of pistachio to add some more color. I chose to use 95% chocolate for this recipe, but you can also use sugar-free chocolate chips if you wish. I just want to show you a variation because we have used chocolate chips in the other flavors. I added a quarter teaspoon of peppermint extract and alternatively you can also use fresh mint if you like. 
Then I added a quarter teaspoon of green food color. Felt like this was too much because the color ended up being darker than usual. So go with an eighth of a teaspoon or a couple of drops if you want it to be lighter than mine. Mix to combine and next, using one block of the 95% chocolate, I finely grated about a quarter of the block. Mix that in to check if I have enough chocolate. And then using a normal size grater, I added in the rest of the block of chocolate. And finally, just a few chocolate chips on top. I added one teaspoon of cocoa powder to one scoop of ice cream, a pinch of salt to bring out their chocolate flavor, and one tablespoon of chopped walnuts. Mix together and you can add a sprinkle of chopped walnuts on top if you like. Now that you have mixed in your preferred flavors into the ice cream, give it a taste and see if you need to make adjustments. And now do you freeze it or what? If you plan on eating it within the week, just refrigerate it and it'll keep for up to a week. You will get beautifully scoopable ice cream and this ice cream has been in the fridge for two days now. It's so scoopable, it's beautiful. I hope I have convinced you that you can make sugar-free ice cream with just cream, butter and sweetener, which is normally staples on the keto diet. If you haven't worked it out by now, the trick is that we shouldn't be freezing sugar-free ice cream. We should be putting it in the fridge. I hope you get to try it and let me know if you want other flavors. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Hey, Thank you. And, and be well. That's my, my ice cream. My ice cream claimed it 20 minutes ago. Thank you. I claimed it days ago. My ice cream. Thank you. Rude.